When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Once again, I welcome all of you, our wonderful viewers who join us for our Sunday Mass. And for today, the church celebrates the first Sunday of Lent. I welcome all of you and your families as we continue now our journey these 40 days with Jesus in the desert. To prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, let us ask God to bless us as we acknowledge our sins and say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall it be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant. That is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response to the song is your path, Lord, our love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Your path, Lord, our love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Your paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Your paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Your paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. 
In former times, these did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the earth, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. Baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and power, be subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus was baptized, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, and to all of our viewers, on this first Sunday of Lent, I have uh, good news, and I have bad news. The bad news is that evil is ever before us. Evil screams at us daily, across the world. We face evil head on head every day. That's the bad news. The good news, God has not abandoned us. God has not abandoned his creation. In his own time, he has come among us and he has arrived in our midst to save us from the devil. Jesus shows us and teaches us that he fought against the devil. He taught us and we see Jesus so that every baptized person might patiently sustain all kinds of temptations and not be troubled. We see Jesus in the desert being tempted by the devil, and as Jesus emerged as a victor, Jesus invites us to emerge from the desert and the devil and the evil in our lives he asks us to emerge as victors. You see, because evil screams at us on a daily basis, we need to constantly say to ourselves, especially during Lent, Lord, reform my life. Lord, change my life. We need to change ourselves, my brothers and sisters, individually. And I believe that we need to change ourselves as a society. Jesus was out in the desert with the wild beast. And we hear how the angels ministered to him. Evil. Bad news. God 
with God. Good news. During Lent, we reflect on what the wild beasts are in our lives. And I'm going to ask you to reflect on the wild beasts that are in your life. What are the particular things that may be devouring you? What are the things that may be devouring your spiritual life? What are the things, what are the wild beasts? Who are the wild beasts that are destroying you? Or who can destroy you? Or who get under your skin? And who tempt you to react, to scream, to yell, to hold a grudge, to get back with vengeance? I'm going to get you. You never know. Watch your back. You see? You see what can happen to ourselves? These things can devour us. These evil things. So let's reflect on the beast in our lives and really think, what are the things that are devouring my spiritual life? What are things that are taking away from who God wants me to truly be like Jesus? And with the help of the angels, as the angels help Jesus, the angels too will help us. So, I ask you this first Sunday of Lent to not only reflect on the beast, but who are your angels? Who is your angel? Or do you have twins? Or do you have triplets? Or do you have multiple angels? And I'm going to ask you to name your angel or your angels. And these 40 days to call upon your angels as they protected Jesus in the desert from evil. To call upon your angels. And with your angels and with God's love, we can fight off the devil. We can fight off evil. Because if Jesus can do it, we can do it. Yes, it's true. We have to fight. We have to want to change for the better. And that, my brothers and sisters, for me this year is what Lent is all about. Spending 40 days putting up the fight, fighting off the beast, preparing to announce the kingdom. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Today, we pray that this Lent, that during this Lent, we allow God to work his wonders in us. Let God work his wonders in you. As you and I struggle against those elements of our lives that would keep us from fulfilling God's mission for us. Okay? So let's turn down to the altar in a few moments. And let's just hear once again what he did for us before he went to the cross. Did you ever stop and think that it was after the 40 days that Jesus came out victorious and left us the Eucharist? How blessed we are to have the Eucharist in our spiritual journey. And once again, how blessed we are that Bishop Favreau has announced that next weekend we are going to be reopening our four churches. We are going to be celebrating all eight masses in our family of parishes. Though we continue to remain under the present restrictions of 30%, we were blessed to have all of our volunteers, and most of our volunteers return to assist all those who wish to return to Mass. And so, my brothers and sisters, if you are willing to return to Mass, beautiful. For those of you who are just not ready, Beautiful. 
because whether we're at home or whether we're at church, we stand in solidarity. Yes, those who are in church will be able to receive the Eucharist. And for those of you at home, one day you will receive the Eucharist again. Because with God, all things are possible. So my brothers and sisters, once again, let us allow God to work his wonders in us as we struggle against evil. Name your angel, name your angels. Call upon your angels. Tell your angels to help you because we do not want anything to come between me and God. Because I close by saying that beautiful, beautiful phrase between me and God and between God and me there is no in between. Now, moved by the love of God's message to all of us, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Turning to our loving God, let us offer the prayers for this first Sunday of Lent. That the church walking the path of Lent increase in faith, hope, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That politicians caring for God's people receive a renewed appreciation of the dignity of all life we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all victims of clerical abuse searching for healing have their hope strengthened and their peace restored, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for initiation within our RCIA for Lisa, Jamie, and Natasha, guided by the joyful witness of their sponsors, their church, and their brothers and sisters and their family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died longing for that place of eternal rest, today we pray. For Rocco Koswali, Marie Lozon, we pray for Carol Panuff, the first cousin to Father Land, and for the repose of the soul of Danny Martinello. For this past week, I lost my first cousin. To COVID. May God grant them eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your Sunday intention.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we can't thank you enough for telling us that you will never abandon us. We know the good news and we know the bad news. We know the bad news is evil. And the good news is you are with us. Be with us, O oh Lord, these 40 days. Listen to our prayers. Respond to our needs. As we try to become more and more like Jesus as an intentional disciple. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. We have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit, contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. You may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days, from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. So in the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praises without ending the flame. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald Peter Favreau, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and forward to our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, glory be yours now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is now in the desert, may his peace come upon each and every one of you, your family, and dwell within your homes. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of this world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body and the One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And just before I process out of the church, I certainly want to extend on behalf of our church a happy 50th wedding anniversary to Sue and Wayne Bergeron, who are the parents to our own Christine Coyle. So Christine, please send our love, our thoughts, and our prayers to your mom and dad this day and this weekend as you celebrate virtually as a family. Happy 50th anniversary, Sue and Wayne. God bless you. Thank you, everybody.